My name is Fidin Wehling and I am working in the Development Law Service, where one of my areas of work is uh, agricultural finance. And we are currently undertaking a legal review of legislation in various countries, and this is why I've been invited today to present um, the study and maybe our first conclusions. So, first uh, I will briefly describe the purpose and methodology of the legal study and then the key pillars of warehouse receipts legislation, which are the core thematic areas that we look at um, in course of the country case studies. So purpose of the study will be to advise governments how to design legislation, sound legislation on warehouse receipts that is adapted to the specific country conditions. And um, we follow the methodology of a comparative legal analysis, which uh, is generally structured into two steps. First, um, here you can see, we, have, we prepare a country review where we describe the legal frameworks for warehouse receipts in various countries. And we, the um, countries marked highlighted in yellow are the countries that we have already reviewed or that are currently under review, but we want to expand them. So how to select the countries? We include countries with a very developed warehouse system, like the US or Canada, Germany or Australia, but also countries, developing countries, that have maybe recently introduced legislation, like in East Europe, to show which system works under which specific country circumstances. Because like uh, Krusty mentioned before, the legislation must be adapted to this country circumstances in, in order to work. You cannot take a very sophisticated legal framework from the US and implement an African country which does not have the resources to enforce it. And in the second step, we compare the results of these country reviews and analyze them to draw best practices and um, to identify what makes these elements differ between the countries. And next, um, I would like to briefly give an outline, an outline of the key pillars that needs to be covered in legislation on warehouse receipts. And these are the thematic core areas that we are debating in the study. So first, um, we will identify nine key pillars. First is the receipt format. You have single and double receipts. The US, for example, usually issues a single receipt whereas countries with a civil law tradition usually use the double receipts. Often they're even separately tradable. Next, um, the rules on the receipt details. That means um, what minimum requirements does the legislation define to be included on the receipt. Then the trading of receipts, especially with single and double receipts, and the registration of receipts. Um, for example, in a centralized register, which uh, supports the system transparency and allows everybody to check on the status of the warehouse receipt. Uh, next, the issue of separate guarantees that may be added on the receipt in order to, to strengthen the confidence of the creditor. Next, very important, the regulation of warehouses, of the organization and operation, which means the, to set up by legislation the licensing system and regular inspections in order to, again, to um, strengthen the confidence of the creditor and also to, to have control over um, the warehouses and who is allowed to to run a warehouse. And here, it is also important to consider the mandatory insurance of the warehouse and the maybe mandatory contribution to indemnity funds, which must be regulated by legislation. Uh, next, the settlement and release of stored goods. 
than execution and priority of obligations, which means the court procedures um, that are different from country to country because the court procedures are defined in the national legislation and they are applicable also on the specific law on warehouse receipts and the priority ranking. And last, the penalties that um, are important, for example, to, uh, to include uh, rules on provisions on penalties for fraud related to warehouse receipts or for warehouses if they do not follow the rules. And um, yes, we, pre we uh, compare these elements that will vary from country to country depending on the legal framework or the legal system in place to draw the best practices. The legal situation is very uh, important within this. I learned this back in about 1990 when in a sale contract from Bolivia with a small producer organization uh, exporting to Brazil in one of the shipments, it was done through a warehouse receipt guarantee program in which the Bank of Brazil was holding the warehouse receipt, and yet the Bank of Brazil released the product without payment. Now you're talking of 3,000 kilometer differential between where the border and uh, Sao Paulo. And what do you do about it? And it becomes very complex. In this case, also with 100% uh, inflation going on uh, in Brazil, and you had to put up 20% of the capital just to start a lawsuit, and that it became undoable, and so they took a $50,000 loss. Uh, fortunately, it was a, they made a lot of profit as a producer organization on the other shipments. But this is, this is real life. Uh, now, what you're also seeing in Latin America is where you do not have the legislation or where it's not feasible. They can't use the term warehouse receipts, but microfinance organizations have created micro warrants and different things and are using the more microfinance trust relationship guarantees to skirt not being legally registered for warehouse receipts, but to take advantage of the function, kind of like they're doing in Niger. Uh, 